Welcome back to ASPI Network. We're real excited today. We're talking about a real cool topic uh, with blood flow restriction. You're here with myself, Dr. Jacob Wilson, and Chase Homer, and we're going to get into it. All right, so everyone that's ever followed Dr. Jacob Wilson, the muscle prop, has probably heard about BFR. So what is BFR? Well, blood flow restriction essentially happens is that you restrict blood flow to the limb, preferably the veins and not the arteries, and then you're actually going to train in a somewhat restricted state. And the thought is that that will actually enhance muscle size as well as strength. All right, cool. So by what, like what mechanism is, you know, is this working? You know, I know from my experience with BFR, I'm getting the pump. So is that what's, is that what's causing BFR to be effective? Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, the pump is one of the major ways that we actually grow in the gym. In fact, we know what happens is the cell itself senses a threat to itself. It says, oh, I'm, I'm swollen, I'm going to have to restructure myself to get larger. And what we've seen in our lab, basically, is that you get a larger pump doing blood flow restriction than any technique that we've actually ever seen. So that extreme danger response actually leads to growth. Uh, the second way is that normally when we train, we build a bunch of lactic acid, and that basically dissipates normally between sets when we're resting, talking with our buddies, or whatever. But when you're doing blood flow restriction, it stays in the muscle. It's stuck there, and doing so it actually triggers growth. In fact, if you take a muscle itself and you actually bathe it in lactate, it will actually grow. And so that's what we're seeing <clears throat> right there. Finally, when you actually lift weights and you blood flow restrict, even though you're doing it with light weight, because your slow twitch muscle fibers get fatigued really quick because they're relying a lot on oxygen, you have to recruit the larger fast switch muscle fibers. So you recruit the same muscle fibers that you would if you were lifting really heavy, and those will therefore grow. All right, so I guess the real question is, you know, let's get into it. How am I gonna apply it to my programming? How tight should I wrap the wraps? How many sets, reps am I gonna be doing it during my workout? Perfect, well, one of the things is I know like, personally, like when I first started doing blood flow restriction, I'm, I'm like you guys out there, you know what I mean? If a little bit is good, more is better. So I, I remember first time I got it, my, my brother Gabe Wilson got it for me for Christmas. And I wrapped so tight that my arms turned purple. I was like, okay, cool, I'm going to grow, right? Well, it turns out that in that case I was actually wrong. <laughs> um, basically, there's um, um, research indicates that if you wrap too tight to the point where you're blue, you've restricted the arteries. And that's not a good thing for growth. What you want to do is actually uh, stop blood from essentially leaving the muscle, but you want it going to the muscle. Arteries bring blood to the muscle so it gets swole. You don't want to stop blood actually from going there. You prevent that main process from actually occurring. So what you want to do is wrap. What we've done in our lab is actually found that if you wrap at a pressure or around on your arms about six out of 10 and on your legs seven out of 10, that will restrict the veins, but not the arteries. And the key is when you're wrapping, you want to wrap straight around. And we'll talk with Kevin and Chase, we'll talk about that later. Um, as far as the actual sets that are concerned, we're still trying to find out the optimal sets. What we do know is in our research and other laboratories as well, that basically if you do about four sets on a body part, three to four sets on a body part, you will get growth. And because remember, you're selecting on intensity, it's around 30 to 50% of your 1RM. You really don't want to go below like 20% because you actually can't recruit the fast switch muscle fibers at that level. You got to at least get to 30%, up to 50%. A lot of people go, why not just go at 100%? There's no point. My uh, good friend of mine, Carlos Ugrinowicz, found that if you increase the intensity, there's no point because blood flow restriction is not working by tension. It's not the point of it. So you don't need to add weight. So you're going 30, 50%, and you're going to do basically what we do in our lab is we do 30 reps. We rest 30 seconds, and then we do 15 reps, and we repeat that two more times. So it's about four sets, 30, 15, 15, 15. Um, and there's different variations you can do of that. All right, cool. I mean, it's all about the pump, right? It's all about the pump, man. All right, so just a few more questions. So how many days a week am I going to be doing this? Am I going to be doing it at the beginning of my workout, at the end of my workout? When am I going to be doing it? So we published a, um, a meta-analysis looking at all different uh, papers that have been done. Um, basically on blood flow restriction in European Journal of Applied Physiology. We looked at the dose of how many days was ideal and basically we found around two to three days a week was ideal for growth. So basically again you're using about uh, two to three days a week at least once a week uh, in your training regimen. Alright cool. Um, and is, what about injuries? I know BFR I've seen it's good for injuries so 
Is that something if I'm injured I might want to do more? Yeah, well that's a good question. So we actually did a case study um, with a bodybuilder that we published. And basically, so the bodybuilder um, was going into a show, he had an osteochondral fracture, and his physician said, you're done, you're not doing the show, you need to get surgery. And bodybuilder's like, look, I've been prepping for a long time. That's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna keep going to this show. So basically, um, what we ended up doing was put him on a, a blood flow restriction regimen, and where he was going, where he could do everything low intensity, but still maintain those growth aspects. Came on stage, did great. When he went back to the hospital, the osteochondral fracture had basically healed itself, and the doctor said he no longer required surgery. Um, and actually, in our lab here, we've done other case studies looking at essentially um, rehab of ACL injuries. Normally, the ACL injury, you'll see a lot of atrophy in the muscle that had the injury. And basically the subject we did it on, you can't tell the difference between the left leg and the right leg. And now ESPN Sports Science just released a huge thing. We were saying this several years ago, we're like, blood flow restriction is the way of the future. You know, and we even know that if you're bed rested, if you can't move, if you're casted, that if you intermittently wrap, that actually it will protect you from losing as much muscle mass. Just intermittently wrapping, because when you wrap, the muscle swells, even without moving. So th uh, that's basically the thing we did. It's definitely good for injury or if you have knees that are hurting and you just can't go heavy, um, well, use blood flow restriction. All right, so my last question is, I know I love BFR. Is there any time I could just do a day for BFR? Say I just want to go hit legs, but I just want to do BFR. Is that something I could do? I think absolutely. The thing is, well, we, we use it when it's needed. And ultimately, I think blood flow restriction should be used as part of a periodized training split. So um, we published a paper. Um, <clears throat> Ryan Lowry is the head author on this one. He actually was the first one to show that practical blood flow restriction, which um, Chase and Kevin are going to show you, uh, actually caused hypertrophy in a periodized model. So basically what we did was we periodized high intensity as well as blood flow restriction and we actually had blood flow restriction on its own day um, and it actually caused basically growth. So when, do you, when would you want to do it as a standalone? That basically we're in our lab, we'll talk about this more, we're in auto regulatory training where basically if you go in the gym and you don't feel as strong, um, why just push yourself to that heavy workout? Why not do something where you can still get make gains but allow yourself to recover? In that case, if you feel horrible walking in the gym, do the whole day blood flow restricted. Uh, actually, <coughs> speed recovery, you won't get increased muscle damage because blood flow restriction causes very little damage, if any, and uh, then you'll actually still get growth. So those are the days I would recommend it. Uh, you can also use it as a finisher um, to your workout. So let's say like you're doing legs, you do a bunch of squats at the end, wrap up, finish them off with, with leg extensions, leg curls. Uh -huh. um, yeah. All right, thank you. You bet. All right, I think that's all we got for today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, make sure to follow us on Instagram, at the Muscle Prof, and we'll see you next time.